Hi, in this video we are going to find the integral part of the number 2 plus square root of 3 all to the power 6. But before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. If you have watched some of my previous videos, you might already know that I do not prefer the use of calculators. Of course, some of you will still use it, and by using a calculator, you will get some number like some number 0.99963 which is very very close to an integer so here is the key argument we are going to show that this number 2 plus square root of 3 all to the power of 6 plus some very small number is going to be equal to an integer. The question is, what number should we pick for this bit? Before deciding that, let's see what we can do on this number. 2 plus square root of 3 all to the power of 6. If we expand it by the binomial theorem, we will get 2 to the power of 6 plus 6 choose 1. Actually, we have a 6 choose 0 at the front. Or to be precise, I'm going to write each term in terms of some binomial coefficient. This is the binomial coefficient. And then powers, the product of powers of 2 and square root of 3. So for the first term, it will be 2 to the power of 6 times root 3 to the power of 0. And then add it by 6 choose 1, 2 to the power of 5, square root of 3 to the power of 1. Now the pattern goes like this. So for the next term, it's always 6 choose the next number, so 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And then the power, the power of 2 will decrease by 1, the index will decrease by 1, while we multiply an extra factor of square root of 3. So the indices here, within each term, they will always have sum to be 6. So as we continue writing, we will have 6 choose 2, 2 to the power of 4, times square root of 3 squared 6 choose 3 times 2 cubed square root of 3 all cubed plus 6 choose 4 2 squared times square root of 3 to the power 4 6 choose 5 times 2 times the fifth power of square root of 3. And finally, with no more factors of 2 and just the sixth power of square root of 3. So we can calculate them one by one. Now, from this, for the first term, it's 1 times 64. And then the second one is 6 times 32 times root 3 plus. 6 choose 2 is then 15. Let me draw a blue line here to separate them. They are not the same thing. 15 times 16 times 3 plus 6 choose 3 is 20 times 8 times 3 root 3 plus 15 times 4 times root 3 to the power 4 and that's 9 and then we're going back to 6 times 2 times 9 root 3 and at last we have just root 3 to the power 6 and that is 27. So we have lots of numbers here and many terms in fact we have seven terms actually they can be divided into two groups these numbers can form a group because they do not contain square root of 3 
while these numbers can form the second group because they all contain square root of 3. So for the yellow group, we will have 64 plus 720 plus 540 plus 27. This is the yellow group. While for the blue group, we will have 192 plus 480 plus, the last term is 108, all multiplied by root 3, and that's the blue group. So if we add them, we'll get 1351 for the yellow group, and for the blue group, you will get 780 times square root of 3. So this is what we will get if we expand 2 plus square root of 3 all to the power 6. Now notice that there is actually another number that, that has similar form and in fact that is 2 minus square root of 3 to the power of 6. Now you can observe that from the pattern that we're doing by the binomial theorem, which is that if we scroll back up, look at the number 2 minus square root of 3 to the power of 6, then actually we're simply replacing this sign, this sign, and this sign to be minus because we're simply considering powers of square root of 3 instead. Let me highlight that in, that in yellow. I'm simply replacing these numbers in yellow by negative square root of 3. If it's brought to even powers, then it will have the same result when we have the index to be even numbers. However, for the terms that contain odd powers of square root of 3, then we will get not plus, but a minus. So we're keeping most of the term, half of the terms exactly the same, while for the others, they are not positive now, but they become negative. And the key is, since they are odd powers of square root of 3, the outcome, the output, will still contain one single square root of 3. They cannot be that they not be combined into integers. So in fact, the blue group and the consequent steps will be affected. And the way they are affected is that we are not adding the terms in the blue group, but we are subtracting them in the blue group. So after doing similar steps, we should get 1351 minus be careful, it's minus 780 times square root of 3. So now we notice that. Let me summarize what we've done just now. By replacing the plus inside the bracket by minus is simply replacing the plus at the other side by minus. So now if we add them up, we're going to have the sum of these two powers to be 2,702, taking away the square root of 3. And this is the point of introducing the power 2 minus root 3 or the power of 6, because you can see that if we add these two powers up, the terms that contain square root of 3 will be cancelled out. And what's left, labeled in yellow, 
is exactly an integer, and that is the thing that we are looking for, because this is the original number, and we're actually adding it by a small positive number. 2 minus square root of 3 is roughly 2 minus 1.732, if you kind of remember what's the value of square root of 3, approximately, is, and it's about 0 0.268. So a number that is between 0 and 1, if you bring it to the 6th power, then it will still be a number that is between 0 and 1. So that means our original number, underlined in green, will be something like 2701 point some decimals at the end. And this tells us our final answer is exactly this number, 2701. And this is the integral part. So for those of you who have been using a calculator, you might have already noticed that by using that, you will get 2701.99963 or 6299 and so on. And so that will, um, that will match our calculations. And this is our final answer.